Hi and welcome to the Dice Cop. I'm Steve and today I'm going to show you how to play a game called Terror. It's a quid space trivia game, it takes about 45 minutes for two to six players um, where you're trying to get answers to quite tough questions. You're either trying to get the exact answer or quite close to the answer numerically or geographically. Um, the way Terra's going to work is you're going to get a double-sided board here. I've put it on the metric side, but the other side's got your inches and your feet if you prefer Imperial. Um, you're going to have uh, a geographical map here of the world split up into different regions. If you can see, they're segregated by different lines here. You've got the South Pacific, uh, Pampas, Brazil, Amazon Basin, Guyana, Great Britain, and so on, split into different regions. You've also got three tracks at the bottom. The top track is the year track, the middle track is length or distance, and the bottom track is number in terms of single digits all the way up to billions. And each of these tracks are segregated. I'll show you those in a bit more detail in a sec. Each player is going to get six counters. One of them is going to go on the zero space on the score track, and the other five are going to go into their hands for placing. And what's going to happen in Terror is you're going to get a question. For example, I'm not going to spoil the answers here, but for example, you've got a card here that says Tower Bridge. Okay? What we want to know from Tower Bridge, on your, if it's your turn to go, we want to know where it is. If you notice at the bottom there, it says one area. We also know, want to know when it was built, when did construction start, and we also want to know the length in metres. Okay? So if Tower Bridge is the uh, card in play, and it's your turn, you've got five cubes, you don't have to guess all five, but on your turn you can place one of your cubes. You might place your cube in a location, you might put it in Britain, you might put it in France, you might put it in Russia, depending on where you think Tower Bridge is. You might put your cube on the year track for the year in which you think it was constructed, I might put between 0 and 500 AD. Or you might put it on the length track, either centimetres, metres or kilometres, depending on how long you think Tower Bridge is. So let's say we're set for a four player game, I'm just going to put a few cubes on the board so you can see how it's going to play and how it's going to score. So let's say green goes first and I'm pretty sure he thinks it's in Britain, uh, white thinks it's in France, yellow thinks, or well, I think the year is uh, 1700 to 1750, red thinks, oh, I think yellow's got it right but I'm going to go next to yellow for various reasons. I'm going to go green again, I can go in the same um, place, I can go another location, however I can't go in the exact same location I did last time, so I'm going to go in the North Sea slash Baltic Sea, you can go on the seas or land, white thinks, so I actually think it's going to be a kilometre long, red thinks, so yellow thinks it's going to be a bit shorter than a kilometre, red thinks it's a lot shorter than a kilometre long, it's only uh, 50 to 100 metres long, and so on, you're going to be placing cubes out until you decide to pass. Green might think, I only know where it is, I don't know any of the other information, so green might pass, white might guess again, Yellow might guess again, red might pass, white might go again, and so on, until either you've placed all your cubes out or you've decided to pass. What would happen now is that you would score it, you would reveal the right answers once everyone's passed, um, and what you would do, you would eliminate the wrong answer. So let's say, uh, for example, that Tower Bridge we think is in Britain, um, so this cube is going to be the right answer, and you're going to remove every cube that is not in Great Britain or adjacent to Great Britain. So the Baltic Sea and the North Sea is adjacent, but France is not because it's split by sea. Sea is considered its own thing if it has a little label in it, so the Arctic Ocean, the North Atlantic, Central Atlantic, these will split the land, so Brazil doesn't border Africa, there's a sea in the middle. So you would remove White's cube there. Let's say the distance down at the bottom, again the distance, uh, sorry, not the distance, the year, um, was um, 1820 to 1840, so no one got that right, but anyone adjacent to that square there is white and no one, so white would stay and all these ones would be removed from the board. And let's say the length was 500 me 510 metres, so yellow is right, white is adjacent and red would be removed. So these cubes here are removed from play and you would score points. If you're exact you would get seven points and if you're adjacent to the right answer you would get three. So here green will get seven for being exact and three uh, for being adjacent, so green will get ten. Down at the bottom track the year, white was adjacent because no one got it right, white would get three. And down here yellow got it right and white was adjacent, so yellow would get seven and white would get three. So the current scores now are red's on nothing, uh, white's on six, yellow's on seven, green's on ten. The cubes that were right would be returned to the player, so green would get both his cubes back, so green's still got five cubes. White would get two of his uh, four cubes that he placed on that board back, and yellow would get one back. 
Then what would happen is that everyone would get one back from the discarded cubes or up to three. So you're always going to start with at least three, but here everyone's got at least three, so white would get one back, yellow would get one back, and red would get one back. So the next round would start with green having five cubes and everyone else having four. You're going to do that for six rounds. You're going to have six goes at the question and you're going to change the start player each time. It is very advantageous going first, especially if it's something you know, because that's like a guaranteed seven points. So white would go first and some of the other categories you might see, again, I'm not going to spoil the answers for you. Some of the other categories you might see are the large, largest and longest fjord system, who knows that, uh, where the cacao tree was first cultivated, who knows that, where is Machu Picchu? I might know that, but also Machu Picchu is the alt altitude above sea level and the number of buildings in Machu Picchu itself. And there's all different things geographically. Sometimes there's animals involved. Sometimes it's um, the last the last dodo, where the last dodo or might be, or the last woolly mammoth, and so on and so on and so on. But they would also have things like heights and lengths and dates and times and stuff um, as well. Some of the categories have more than one area, so some things might be in two different areas. So they might be, for example, it might be certain species or something that might be found in, for example, Central Africa and Upper Guinea. So again, there are two correct locations you might get, but there's generally only one correct year or only one correct length or only one correct number, depending on what they're going to ask you. If you have a look at the scoring tracks at the bottom, they're not linear. Uh, so as you can see here for the year, you've got 20,000 to 10,000 BC. That's a gap of 10,000 years. But as you go further up, you get gaps of 200 years, gaps of 50 years, 20 years, and towards later day, 10 years. Every, uh, things are the same with lengths again, starting very small with between one and two centimeters, less than a centimeter, so on and so on and so on. And as you go up through the track, the gaps get larger and larger until you're into tens of thousands of kilometers right down this end. But you again have a non-linear scale for numbers, allowing people to have quite a flexible um, chance of guessing, because when you get into large numbers, you want a wider gap. So that is the board game Terror. It is, uh, from Bezier Games, and it is a sequel to the game Fauna, which is a very similar game, apart from Fauna is all to do with animals and plants. Uh, it's the same sort of thing, where is this animal, how long is the animal, um, when did the plant go extinct, or whatever it might be for different sorts of animals and plants, but this gives you a slightly broader range uh, of topics and locations. I think the locations in this game are easier, uh, not necessarily the numerical values at the bottom. If this is a game you like, uh, it's similar to Wits and Wages, where you don't actually need to know the right answer, you just need to know who else might know the right answer, and go near where they're going. Um, so you don't need to know everything in this game, you can you hedge your bets and follow other people, get pick up a few points here and there. Um, but if this is the sort of game you like, come to the Dice Cup when we're open, and have a play of it. This has been Terror, I've been Steve from the Dice Cup, thank you very much.